Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning and a rather wet uh, morning here in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. I'm starting off the show this morning because uh, Roshan apparently is double booked, so my usual partner in crime is not here today. But uh, we've got a much more beautiful lady in Hui Ming here with us, uh, also the co-founder of Leadernomics. And uh, here she is. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Ravi. Good morning, everyone on the show. Yeah, I'm sure the, the, the most of the crowd uh, find you much better looking than Roshan. So it's nice to have uh, one of us to be good looking here. <laughs> nice compliment from you. I'm not sure what Roshan thinks about that. <laughs> I said one of us, you know, so that's, that's that oh, one no. is you. So I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting myself in the same category with Roshan. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't complain. He can't quite oh, complain you guys about so that. Right? Uh, uh, and 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 today, thanks for joining us. And it's not often we get to see the the co-founder of Leadernomics. So it's great to have you here. The other, I think we're going to bring on our host today, uh, just yes. to share a little bit today. Uh, you know, uh, Hui Ming, we are we are very much helping the small and medium sized industries. And today, the com the our host is absolutely at the thick of that fight yeah uh to help malaysian companies uh the cgc the corporate guarantee corporation of malaysia uh they've mm -hmm. been ha they've, uh, they've been terribly busy they've been out there trying to help as much as possible so i hope there's a lot of smes tuned in today but even if they don't they always can see the show later and uh, we'll get that so i think without any further ado let's bring on mr leong of uh cgc hi morning hi, everybody. Morning, hi morning 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 morning, and morning ravi Thanks for having me Hi, on. <laughs> yeah, but before we start, Leong, uh, one yeah, of the things sure. that uh, in, in, you know, just being consistent with uh, what Roshan does, and if I can leave it yeah. to Hui Ming to take this first question, is to just tell us if you can share with us a little bit about your background and your journey to becoming the Chief Business Officer of CGC, Corporate, CGC Malaysia. Okay, well, okay, sure, no problem. Um, my whole entire life, I've been in the banking circle. Okay, so from the day I joined, I was in uh, banking. I I was in OCBC. My first job was in OCBC. I'm sure. I'm not sure whether how many of you heard that uh, OCBC actually used to have a finance company. You know? So I've joined finance, OCBC finance. Last time in the old times of the banking world, a long time ago, we used to have finance. And finance companies were actually uh, financing higher purchase. Uh, they were dealing with uh, uh, leasing and all that. Lah. So I was in OCBC for almost 19 years before that. And after that, after that I left to join uh, another banking, uh, another bank, which is Hongyang Bank. And then subsequently, I joined CGC. So you can see most of my life and in the banking circle, I've been actually doing quite a fair bit of SME business. So all the time I've been in the SME world. And um, I'm happy that uh, last time when I was doing the SME uh, banking uh, type um, loans and all that, I was looking at things on a more macro view. But whereas now in CGC, I get to see it on a bigger uh, macro view, sorry. Last time I was in a micro view, and right now I get to see things on a macro view. And at times we get to help Bank Negara to set some of these policies and make things happen. So I'm always happy and passionate about uh, running the SME uh, business. Why? I think it's because really it's not easy to be an SME, you know, it's, it takes a lot of passion, commitment, and a lot of hard work. Uh, so, so I always feel that, and it also helps out in giving employment to a lot of uh, other people, employees. La. So they are the backbone, seriously. Almost 50% of the SMEs uh, that we have provides more than almost 50% of the employment in Malaysia. So it's really exciting. And it's not easy as what I always say, I really do respect the SMEs because it's not an easy journey, more so ever now with the COVID. La. 
So this is basically how my journey is. Yeah. And Mr. Lee, I think you so aptly put it, you know, as an SME ourselves in the Romics, we struggled like crazy over the pandemic. Yeah, precisely. And maybe, Correct. yeah, I'm really wanting to name for all the audience as well, you know, who are small business owners as well. Maybe you can yeah. tell us a bit more what does CGC do and, you know, how is it fighting this fight and helping the SMEs during this pandemic period? You know? Sure. Maybe uh, I have some slides. Maybe I'll just show some of these slides so that people okay. may appreciate CGC. All right, so um, maybe just to share, uh, CGC has been in business. Uh, next slide, please. So CGC is actually a subsidiary to Bank Nagara. Okay, so not many people know that uh, we are actually a subsidiary. 78% uh, owned by Bank Nagara. The balance of the 22% is owned by other banks, you know, all the local banks and all that in Malaysia. Uh, we have been in existence since 1972. All right, so uh, 49 years. Next year, we will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. All right, so uh, if everything goes well next year, Ravi, as well as we may, we will invite you to our yeah. big uh, 50th birthday. All right. And with the end so, of the pand <laughs> pandemic as well, and yes, economic of course. recovery. Yeah, we'll yes, celebrate all three. Is that a big angpao given for the SMEs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, we have been, we have been, uh, we have been assisting many of these SMEs. And I think uh, since 1972 to date, we have actually helped out more than 350,000 SMEs. Uh, guarantee and financing value is uh, 85 million. There are a lot of SMEs who were SMEs prior to this, but they have grown out to be big uh, corporate customers or big SMEs. Uh, have you heard of like Corn in the Corp, Body Shop, yeah. IP88, Kichap yeah. Tamin, uh, Clara International, last time that does the uh, Mary Brown. So, so there are quite a fair bit of them who used to be very small, uh, but um, ultimately, uh, what happens is that they manage to grow big. Lah. And maybe we hope to say that we were one of the so-called assistance given that made them this way. Lah. So normally what happens is that when a customer or an SME goes to a bank, they will always say that uh, I need to borrow, they say 100,000. And normally the banks will ask them, um, do you have any collateral? And most of the time, most of the time, this uh, micro or small SMEs will say that I don't have any collateral. Then they will then what the bank will normally do is that then they will look at this customer's net worth and see whether is the customer's net worth strong enough. And generally speaking, they may not be la. So this is where we come in and guarantee this uh, uh, the banks that these SMEs will pay uh, these uh, loans la. So in general, this is what we have been doing since 1972 till date. Lah. But um, we also realized that, uh, the next, uh, next slide, please. We also realized that CGC needs to diversify and move out from just doing guarantee. Lah. So uh, like what many companies have also pivoted and also become more uh, so-called you need to be relevant. To me, the word is relevant. And we need to be relevant to the current SMEs. So you can see here, our business, which we started as a guarantee business, we have pivoted into also doing direct financing. Okay, uh, in 2014, we realized that many SMEs were not able to get financing from banks. You know? A lot of startup businesses, uh, uh, were not able to get financing from the bank. So this is where we started to provide direct financing to customers. And our role, uh, just to highlight to many of you all out there, is that we are not supposed to be competing with the banks. We are supposed to complement the banks. So what has happened is that uh, we realized that uh, the customers were complaining uh, that they were not able to get loans from banks for startups. So this is where we came in in 2014 to land up. And the product is called Bismula. All right. And, and we started to lend to uh, these uh, startups. Ever since then, we have realized that uh, the banks, uh, we shared the, 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 the statistics of this with the banks. Lah. And now you can see that the banks are also doing, some of the banks are also doing startup businesses. All right. So, so what we do is that we are always like doing some R&D. 
so that the banks uh, will feel more comfortable about uh, lending to this segment. And when they lend to them, uh, this is where we come back to guarantee this segment. So this is where uh, we are continuing on the journey of direct financing until uh, most of the banks are doing uh, this project. Uh, we are also having a, a special fund, which is called TPUBI, Tabung Project Usahawan Bumi Putra, which is uh, if any of the Bumi Putras do have any contracts with the government or with government-linked companies, we are more than happy to lend it to them. All right. And we also realize one more thing is that many of these SMEs, they are not able to get financing all right, from the banks. And when they don't get financing, they don't understand exactly what is wrong with them that they are not able to get financing. Most of the the banks will tell them that, sorry, uh, management uh, rejected the loan. So that's why we are not able to lend. So many of these customers will never be able to go back into the legal financial ecosystem. So this is where we set up my KMP. And uh, this is where this my KMP is supposed to help out all the SMEs who are not able to get a, uh, financing. And we will highlight to them how, uh, why is it that they didn't manage to get financing? And we will also refer them to some other platforms that are able to provide them with fi some financing. That's more on my KMP. The second one that I want to also highlight is that um, we realize that when customers get guarantee and financing, uh, especially the small and micro businesses, there's one thing that they need from uh, the uh, CGC as well as some of these uh, financial institution, which is some developmental program. Uh, a lot of the stats that we have is that a lot of these customers uh, will normally turn non-performing in the second and third year. Most of the SMEs are. Uh, uh, why do they become, uh, why they uh, are not able to sustain is because they do not understand that having a financing is just one part of it. You need to develop other skill sets uh, like maybe right now you need to know how to do digital marketing. Okay, you need to know how to do digitalization in terms of your processes so that you, you can actually manage down your costs. You know, so there's a lot of things and where do you have market access? Uh, where do you go to to find your customers and your suppliers? So a lot of all these things, uh, we need to guide them uh, if possible. Last but not least is that uh, we have also gone into digitalization ourselves, uh, CGC. Uh, we have actually started the first uh, referral platform for SMEs in Malaysia. I think it's also the first in Southeast Asia and I think even in Asia. Uh, it's called IMSME. Okay, uh, next page, please. This platform uh, actually helps SMEs uh, throughout Malaysia to be able to get financing. So what has happened is that we realize a lot of micro and small SMEs, uh, normally the banks will not uh, look for this small and, small and micro SMEs. Uh. So uh, these small and micro SMEs have a hard time also looking for the banks is because they feel intimidated uh, with the looks and the feel of the bank. Uh. So, so a lot of them will actually go to maybe loan sharks or credit companies uh, because they feel that there's a high rejection a perception. Uh, there's high rejections and um, the banks are never friendly to them. So we started this platform uh, in 2018. Okay, This platform is really to refer uh, the micro and small SMEs to the banks. And uh, what happens is that within two, hour, uh, two days, the banks are supposed to get back to this small and uh, small and micro SMEs. La. We have been running it for since February 2018. Uh, I think to me, I think we have done fairly well. We have got two over a million worth of uh, visitors. Uh, in terms of uh, registration, we have about 45,000 SMEs registered with us. As said to date, we have about 4,000 over approvals, value about uh, 400 over million. So average ticket size is about uh, 100 over 1,000. So it is a good platform and we are const uh, constantly improving on it. So we right now we are saying that it takes 
two days for the banks to get back to them. But when the banks move towards full digitalization, which means that the approvals can be done online, we will be hooking up with them via API and we can actually have uh, online approvals within minutes. Lah. And uh, on this platform, we have got more than 25 partners. The banks are in there. The P2Ps are in there. The peer-to-peer -peer lending. The equity crowdfunding partners are in there. So, so and we have some development uh, building organizations uh, like MIA, which is also in there, SEDA and all that. Uh. So we're going to make this uh, platform uh, easier for the SMEs to access. Uh. Let, uh, next page, please. Uh, we have also, uh, CGC, we have also 16 branches throughout Malaysia, uh, mainly at uh, all the states in Malaysia, like except Perlis, which is by, uh, serviced by our Kedah site. Lah. Okay, we have a branch in Kedah. All right. Uh, last but not least, we are contactable via uh, our email. Okay, www.cgc.com.my as well as our contact center uh, is over there. Uh, but uh, do visit us in, uh, if you are any of the SMEs, do visit us in www.imsme.com.my. So this is a little presentation about CGC. Again, many people, though we are here for 49 years, many SMEs do not know us. Uh, though we have also served 300 over 1,000 SMEs, is because uh, in the letter of offers given out to the banks, uh, we are actually at the second or third page, uh, just one line only, guaranteed by CGC. So many SMEs uh, doesn't know that we have actually existed. And most of the time when they see uh, who give them the loan is who that they acknowledge. Lah. So lesser to the guarantor part. Lah. So this is how we have been existed for 49 years. Lah. All right. So back to you guys. Maybe just to kick off the question, just a matter of clarification. You have sure. got 16 branches. Let's go back to the conventional rather before we go into digital. Uh, sure. Do customers approach you or it's the bank, they go to see the bank and the bank uh, goes or is it both? Okay. It all depends on what type of products and services that they are looking for. Lah. So mm. most of the time, the banks will be servicing uh, customers which are three years and above in the in sense of uh, operations. Lah years in operation mm -hmm. if it's a startup businesses or that generally some banks do not uh, do this type of businesses so this is yeah. where they can come to cgc for the direct financing okay so uh, when they come to us uh, assuming if any of the customers come to us if they are four years in business or whatever we will actually refer them to the banks Okay, yeah, so okay. they come to you because I was just interested when you said the letter of offer because that's where I was picking yep. up. Because uh, the bank will, if I've gone and seen you, I of course I know that you were the, yes. the reason behind my financing. But Correct. is there a, is there a path where the banks itself go to you uh, to mm. to actually reduce their risk? Yeah. So this is where we do the portfolio guarantee. Uh, just yeah. now, during one of the slides, we talk about guarantee. Uh, this is where we work out with a lot of the banks on portfolio guarantees. And normally what happens is that uh, you will see that uh, SMEs, uh, one of the requirements is fast approval. And for yep. the banks, uh, they always talk about fast approvals. And how we work out with the banks for fast approval is that we uh, will talk to the banks and we have already worked out on uh, a pre-agreed eligibility criteria. Lah. So normally it's about 15 criteria, lah. generally speaking, 15 to 20 criteria that we have worked out with the banks uh, that both of us agreed to. So when it goes to when the customer goes to the bank, the bank will go through these criteria. If they are okay, they will just send a notification to us. And within 24 hours, we will agree on the guarantee and the banks will actually got the loan out within maybe a, uh, within days or within maybe now some of the banks are also within minutes or they, uh, you know within minutes and all that so this is how we work on this guarantee with the banks so upfront we have already pre-agreed on the criteria so the banks when they go out and look for customers they are already certain what are the criteria that uh, both of us have agreed on Tremendous. Mr. Young, I mean, writing on the yeah. criteria question, you just the, the, the statement you brought out, right? Would you be sure. able to be share with us some of the critical criteria that you look at? Because honestly, I'm an SME yeah. in 2018 when we went seeking for funds and loans yeah. 
from all the banks. I think we were rejected two to three, two to three banks rejected us, and we were ten years, ten years old wow. as an organization. Um, yeah. Somehow, I don't know why we probably didn't hear about CGT at the time, and we didn't really know there was something that we could actually go to for that. So I'm really wow. curious whether you could share some of the critical criteria that are being evaluated um, mm. for SMEs, you know, to get the credit guarantee, or you know, even mm. with the banks as well. Mm. Okay, so generally speaking, like like what I said just now, sometimes years in operation is uh, one of the key things that the banks looks at. Uh, the other thing is that always remember one thing uh, that. Uh, the banks ultimately wants to make sure that the customer is able to repay back the loan. All right. So, so they will actually look at uh, uh, the debt service ratio. Debt service ratio. Okay. How whether it can the customer repay back all the loans or not? And you you will not notice that uh, a lot of SMEs, uh, a lot I mean, okay. So there's a high proportion of them. Uh, normally, the banks would actually take uh, bank statements or uh, audited accounts. Last time, the banks normally they will what they will do is they will look at the audited statements, lah. And many a times, a lot of the customers when they show the audited statements, uh, as, especially SMEs, generally they are not doing too well. Eh, no? I'm not too sure whether is it because they want to avoid tax. Okay, just just being very truthful. Some of the customers, uh, the SMEs, they want to avoid tax, they, so they actually declare very low profit and all that. So when the customers declare very low profit, the the banks will think, hey, how can the customer be able to repay the loan if uh, throughout the years uh, you are showing very little profit or you are not making profit at all and all that? So this is where sometimes also uh, understanding how to manage financial. Uh, is uh, financial literacy for the SMEs is also very important. Uh. Okay, so uh, now the banks are also moving towards uh, bank statements. Uh, bank statements is also very important to show that uh, you have got the capability to pay. Uh, you know, so last time, you know, if you run a business, sometimes the bank, the customers, uh, when they receive cash, they don't put it into the bank. So the banks are not able to tell whether the customers have actually received cash, whether the customers' bank statements are they robust enough to pay for this uh, uh, so-called loans and all, and all that. Lah. So we talk about debt service ratio. We also need to understand that uh, the banks, each and every bank has got their own risk appetite. So there are certain banks which are more interested to do a certain segment of uh, business. So in if you look at uh, SME Corp, they generally have a few, you know, uh, uh, listed type of uh, uh, segments. You have got the construction, you have got the agriculture, wholesale, retail, menu, uh, manufacturing, uh, mining, and all that. Lah. So certain banks are having more appetite towards certain segments. Uh, different banks have got different segments. Lah. Like if you go to Agrobank, they, you will know that the segment that they are looking for is agriculture. So, so you will see that there is different risk appetite amongst different banks. Lah. So it's also very important to know uh, which bank has got the appetite that you are looking for and all those things. Lah. Yeah. Got it. So this is my got it. advice. Lah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I see that sure. we have quite a lot of listeners calling uh, dialing in already and viewing this. Sure. We do have a question from Jit uh, Husni, Husni Arif Shah. And he asked yeah. this, right, um, Mr. Leong, what is the main driver for the tie up with ASEATA regarding the digital uh, banking guarantee? Uh, okay. okay, so basically, you see, we uh, CGC wants to work with uh, all parties which are legalized and so that we can actually provide guarantees to uh, these uh, organizations so that they can actually lend out more to these SMEs. Lah. You see, when, when we provide guarantees, we are actually helping the banks uh, in the sense that they actually reduce their risk. Lah. When we guarantee the banks, uh, most of the time it's about 50 to 70% guarantee that we are taking. All right. So when we give out 50 to 70% of the guarantees, it means that the banks, they will be taking lesser risk. And when the banks take lesser risk, the banks can actually lend out more to more SMEs. Uh, this is what our role is. Lah. So, so we always want the bank to actually leverage up because the banks also are very concerned about risk. And it is crucial for banks to take care of the risk because they also take care of our deposits. Lah. So if a bank is not strong, 
you will find that people like us who are depositors will have a tough time with the banks uh, if the if the MPLs continue to rise. You know, so this is where we play our role to guarantee the banks so that the banks can also lend out at the same time be able to manage their risk. Uh. So this is where so for digi, uh, for Asiata, they are doing with the underserved and unbanked customers. Uh. So when they are dealing with it, we find that it's very exciting and we want to guarantee uh, these digital banks and we are not just working with Asiata, we are working with any of the digital banks uh, that is going to be coming out soon. Uh, I think it will be first quarter next year. And we are more than happy to work with any of these banks to guarantee their portfolios. So, if, um, so, so currently right now, uh, we are working with the banks. Uh, currently, most of the most of those that we are working out is the banks, but we are moving towards uh, even uh, credit companies. Uh. So, so Asiata, when they work with us currently right now, they are on uh, credit license. Soon, if they, if if they ever get the digital license, we are more than happy to work with them on the digital guarantee also. So that the SMEs benefit. At the end of the day, I just want to highlight is that so that most of this will translate down to SMEs but, uh, of whatever segment they are able to get financing. Oh, okay, uh, Mr. Leong, just uh, yeah, out of interest, right. uh, coming sure. back to this, when you talked about a little bit, I mean, don't forget, we've also got uh, students in universities, people looking out. So just to sure, understand no a little bit better the process, uh, perhaps not direct, yep. it's something which is of interest. Uh, yep. Just looking at when you say you guarantee a portfolio of the banks, so mm. when a single customer, you know, in, in the, 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 the banking business is a risk business. Like, there's no such thing as mm. lending without loss. Like, huh? that, that's Correct. a given, Correct. right? So yes, sure. when the loss takes place, t share mm. with us what happens in that process with, between yourselves and the bank. Who's responsible for recovery? When do you repay the bank, etc.? How does that all work? Sure. Okay, when a bank gives out a loan to the customers, the banks will definitely also want the directors uh, to provide a guarantee to the company, uh, to the loan. Uh. Why do they do that is generally speaking, they want the directors to be committed to the businesses. And generally speaking, if you are a sole prop and partnership or even a Sundaram Brahat, a small setup, you will be able to give your uh, guarantee uh, to the loan because you should be committed in running your business. So if they are not committed, then that's where you will see that um, a lot of the defaults will happen. Okay. So generally, this is what it happens. Most of the banks will get the director to guarantee the loans. So what will happen is that, assuming, assuming if it's a hundred thousand dollar loan, uh, we will guarantee maybe seventy percent of it. Okay. Um, and this is where most of the time uh, the the loan will be still managed by the SMEs, they will have to continuously pay the loan. Okay, they will have to continuously pay the loan. And when the customer uh, face difficulties, okay, again, I want to highlight to you that all banks do have a heart. So what they will have, uh, what they will do is that they will actually call up the customers and ask them, hey, look, are you facing any financial difficulties and all that? Okay, are you facing any financial difficulties or whatsoever? The banks will generally speak, speaking before it turns MPL on the third month, and MPL will only turn account will only turn MPL when the customer don't pay three months consecutively, Okay, then it will only turn MPL. So what the banks will normally do is that they will check with the customers before it turns three months. Do you need any restructuring of the loan? Do you need any rescheduling? You know, this is where the the banks will actually talk to the customers to say, do you need any uh, rescheduling, restructuring? And this is where the customers need to be honest, or, uh, needs to be honest with the banks also if they are facing financial difficulties and all that. Lah. So there's this process of negotiation. Do they need any restructuring of the loan and all that? So if the loan really turns MPL on the third month, all right, so what the banks will do is that they will actually come and inform us that this account has turned MPL, all right? So uh, again, this is where the banks will continue on with their own legal uh, process, all right? They will process on with, with the legal process. And this is where when CGC knows about this process, okay, we take note and about this process. So what will happen is that once this account 
has fully exhausted uh, uh, all the legal actions and the customer just cannot pay and all that. Uh, this is where CGC then will repay back whatever balances that uh, is outstanding. The customer could have made some payments and all that along the way. But whatever outstanding that they have not been able to pay, this is where CGC will come in to pay back the percentage that we have actually guaranteed on. Just to make it clear. Right. So, yeah. so the banks will take the $50 loss and let's say they couldn't recover anything and then, oh, sorry, $30 loss and then you $30,000 loss and you will give them back their $70,000. Yes. In correct. the example of the 100000 Correct. Yep. So correct. the bank's loss correct. is not so big. Correct. So this is where we come in to play our role to help the, the banks to leverage. Imagine if we didn't come in, the bank would have to take a 100% risk. Whereas yep. if we come in, the banks can lend to three customers, you know, and yep. still be able. So so this is where we play our role to assist the SMEs and the banks out lah, at the same time. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Just coming back on that. Uh, sorry, Hui Ming, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, there's another okay, question, right. I believe. You want to call that out, please? Yeah, yeah, I think there's, uh, there's another question here from Daniel Ahmad. Sure. I, I know that we had uh, in episode 22, uh, three episodes ago, on from some of CITOS to come here, but he has this question also from Mr. Leong. Can credit bureaus like CITOS help speed up the application process for SMEs through their credit scores? Okay. You see, there are two parts of CITOS, lah, just to highlight to everybody. They... they they, they used to be doing only one thing, which is uh, talking about who has been bankrupt, which company is going through wind up and all that. They used to be doing this particular business, but they have also uh, diversified out into providing credit scores to certain banks or so. Lah. Okay? There are, at the moment, there are three so-called major credit bureau companies in Malaysia. Lah. There are actually more, but the three which are uh, fairly well known right now is actually uh, CBM Credit Bureau of Malaysia, which we have a shareholding in. Okay, we own forty nine percent of Credit Bureau of Malaysia. All right, we used to be the major shareholder. Now we own forty nine percent Credit Bureau of Malaysia. The Citos, as well as Experian. These three are the credit, and so a lot of the banks will actually use the scores that they give. So, so to be clear, uh, when Daniel asked this question, uh, there are two parts of it. And, and uh, if you have got problems with uh, bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcy as well as winding up, if you have settled your case, my personal opinion is that you need to go back to CITOS to clear your name and all that. Like, you really need to deal with them, okay, on that particular piece. Because, uh, they are the one who publish this score and people like us or the banks and anybody who's using it we are just a user so so you need to really go back to them to clear that part out from them in terms of the credit score uh the banks are using this credit score to assist them in their credit evaluation and this credit score that, that they give is just one of the elements the banks have a black box. I think all banks that does credit loans, uh, retail loans and whatsoever, they have got a black box in there. And this score is just one of them. They have got many other things that they look at to, to actually evaluate a customer. I just want to highlight this to you. So this, is, this credit score is not just the only thing that they look at. It's just one. And, and many organizations are moving towards uh, many types of new uh, so-called credit evaluation tools. La. One of it uh, is also psychometric. Not too sure whether you are aware or not. Some of the other banks, like uh, just like Aziata, just now somebody brought up Aziata, they are also using telco data. So the, the credit landscape has actually changed. Last time, if you notice that we will be only using uh, financials, you know, like aud audited accounts and all that. Okay, uh, so so a lot of things have changed. So new organizations and uh, new people, uh, new uh, new uh, even banks are changing the way that they are looking at uh, credit. Last time they don't look at bank statements. Now they are looking at bank statements. Bank statements seems to be more 
more more more current uh, in the sense mm-hmm. if you look at the bank statements if you look at audited accounts they may tell you the mm-hmm. past but they don't tell you more current so everybody has moved towards more current type of uh, mm-hmm. credit evaluation i hope i answered daniel ahmad's uh, question all right perhaps uh, just uh, one thing that you already talked a little bit about and you said yep. counter cyclical i mean hmm. um can you just share with us in this crisis sure. uh, what yeah. does that mean in counter cyclical in terms of the amounts being spent yeah I suppose okay so and everything else yeah 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 okay so what what has happened is that uh, we have been very active in uh, the government's initiative uh, from day one until now if you can see that they they actually have got this uh let me see i can uh, hang on just give me a second uh, just they have got this uh, prihatin, permule, and all that. The the whole cycle of it has actually yeah. been going on. All right. So so you can see that we started off with prihatin, then there's panjana, then there's this permai, okay, and then there's this permakasa, and then you got permakasa plus and permule lah. So in all these things, we have actually been very active in this uh, whole journey, and our role mainly is in the guarantee business. All right. So like what I said, during this whole period, uh, we have been active in becoming a guarantor to special relief fund, the SRF, as well as to the TRRF, targeted uh, relief and recovery fund. So we have been very active in uh, doing this particular as a guarantor. And besides this, and besides this, the banks have also been coming out with their own portfolio guarantees to assist the SMEs which are also in difficulties during COVID. So, so we have also been the guarantor to these uh, particular programs uh, to lend out to them. So you can see a lot of the banks have actually been giving out a lot of unsecured loans. Generally, our loans are all unsecured, you know. Okay, just to be very clear, they don't need any collateral. So uh, to also the SRF and TRF, all these loans are all, uh, in a way, unsecured. So uh, the banks have been giving out this, and constantly we have been a guarantor to uh, these uh, programs that uh, the uh, government has actually dished out. Uh, coming back to this, you know, we, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a, a somewhere uh, out of the, uh, you know, uh, the left field question on this one. Sure, sure. But you, no you mentioned. Uh, you know, lending to startups, and of course, you know, mm. banks uh, traditionally never did that. They are pretty okay with mm. trade finance or and stuff yeah. like that, even fairly early on, right? Now. But yeah. but let me ask you: There's another uh, set of people who can never get loans in, in you know bank policies. That if you've gone bad and you're on secrets, etc., you'll you'll never get a loan. But mm. my best chance of recovery and restructuring that was our last discussion last week. You've got mm. really, you know very very tough borrowing criteria if you're going to go to a distress fund and that's also for very large corporations not for small guys anyway where do you get funding if i've gone bad and you know the best chance for recovery for all stakeholders is i need money right and i need to restructure where can i go for my funding there is there, is there a role that cgc could play in the future yes definitely we we have all the time in playing this but let me share with you ravi that um uh you know how blessed we are as a country. Eh? We just celebrated Madrika, you know, and we are going to celebrate uh, uh, Hari Malaysia and all those things soon. And and sometimes I think it's important to realize uh, that uh, our diversity and all those things really makes us very resilient as a country. Lah. So in terms of our financial ecosystem, uh, a lot of people may not understand it but and don't appreciate it, but let me highlight to you how robust is our financial ecosystem. Um, let me share with you. In terms of lending, we have the government. Okay, uh, You will see the likes of Tekun and Mara. Just now you say that uh, people are not... Uh, how, how robust is our ecosystem? Let me share. We have got Mara, we have got Tekun. This is the government agency Okay, that does lending. We also have Pernas, PNS and all that that does lending, you know. Okay, government sector. Then we come to the commercial side, we have got the banks. And when we look at the banks, uh, it's also very unique. Uh. Um, I don't see many countries having this. We have got the commercial banks, 
Okay, we have got the Islamic banks. We have got the developmental financial institution. The likes of BSN, Agrobank, Exim Bank, these are all developmental financial institution. Okay, and besides, uh, CGC is also a developmental financial institution. So you, you see, look at banks itself, you have got three segments. And then besides that, okay, besides that, we also have got Securities Commission, which have actually uh, legalized, in a way, uh, P2Ps, uh, P2P, peer-to-peer -peer lending, as well as equity crowdfunding. Okay? And then we also have got, so you see Pitch In, Funding Societies, Fantastic, uh, you know, so many of these uh, 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 setups. Uh, also in, in the uh, financial ecosystem to lend money. You know? And then we also have got credit companies, which uh, the license is from KPKT, Kementerian, Perumahan, and Kerajaan yeah. Tempatan, if I'm not mistaken. Money lend, the old money lending license. Yeah, right? money lending license. We have got the likes of Aeon Credit, you know, Aziata is also in there. So, can you, can, if you look at the whole financial ecosystem, uh, it's so rich with so many lenders, you know, okay? And with all this uh, ecosystem, we do we do find that all of them have like heads uh, like me who is the head of lending or whatever the banks also and everybody year by year our bosses will keep telling us you better lend out more you better guarantee more and i think none of these organizations are uh, the head of business banking or whatever none of them uh, they actually do have a boss to uh, that says to them hey you better don't lend out so more so much so so what i'm trying to say is that we have such a rich eco financial ecosystem but the smes themselves do have to realize that they have to be also financial literate and do understand that um, in each of all these organizations we need to be sustainable and for us to be sustainable you need to understand what needs what are the needs of all these custom uh, what are the needs and like what you said just now about the underserved and unbanked with this whole rich entire uh, ecosystem, there will be somebody who is willing to take the risk of these customers. La. That's all I'm saying. So, so what you, unless it's really bad, la, you know, if it's a bankrupt and all those things, definitely there's a harder chance. La. But if it's on 50-50 grounds, there are, if you're not able to get it from banks, with this so-called rich financial is ecosystem, I'm sure there will be somebody able to lend to them one way or another. But they also need to make sure that they are worthy to be lent. And this is where I think uh, a lot of the banks, as well as all the P2Ps and all that, are also playing their role. I think Leadernomics is also playing the role in guiding the customers into having better understanding of financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So this is how I, I look at it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I think we do have a couple more questions coming in from the audience and I know we have not much time yeah. left. So I'm going to bring up maybe sure. one, one more no question first. A question sure. from Profile on LinkedIn. Does CGC mm. back on ideas with plans or need some business evidence? I believe this is regarding the startup uh, part that you mentioned about earlier on. Yeah. So, so uh, most of the time, it all depends on the types of businesses that you're in and all that. All right. So, um, like for CGC, we are in startup businesses. Minimum is six months in business. La. We are all asking for at least minimum six months in business. So, if you do have some good plans and all that, some banks are also willing to look at it and some uh, P2Ps or equity crowdfunding. So, the other thing I also want to highlight to all the audience is that as a SME, you need to be very clear that when you need money, eh, when you need money, there's actually two channels, you know. One of the channels is equity type of financing. The other is debt financing. You must be very clear about what's the difference between equity financing and debt financing. Let me share with you. It is uh, paramount that you understand that if you take a debt financing, debt financing means uh, you go to the banks and all that lah, for financing you must be very clear that the banks would require you to pay the very next month. Okay, that is debt, uh, debt financing. When you take a loan with the bank or you take a loan with uh, maybe uh, with banks, uh, you need to understand that the banks would require you to pay the very next month. But if you take uh, equity financing, 
Okay, equity financing means that you allow shareholders to come into your company. Okay, and these shareholders maybe they are expecting maybe maybe three years or five years. Then only you pay them dividend or whatever. They don't expect you to pay them immediately. Uh, so so it all depends on what type of businesses that you are in. If your business takes time to gather revenue and all that, I my suggestion to you, my personal suggestion to you is that you better go for equity type of financing, because if you take that, you are not able to repay the loan. So I think it's very important for the SMEs to understand the difference between equity financing and debt financing. So if you know that you yeah, if you are not able to pay within the next few months. Try to go for equity financing, and there will be a lot of people who may not have the idea, but they have got the money to support you in this type of deals. And I've seen a lot of this equity crowdfunding doing very well and getting a lot of uh, shareholders uh, coming in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's quite a lot of these platforms available in Malaysia today, right? Pitch in, yes, and, and all that, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I'm going to bring up one more question for you. Uh, sure. Young. This is from Daniel yeah. again from LinkedIn. And I think this is the question in regards to, you know, in the in the event of a potential default, right? Um, you know, SMEs may not be well versed in debt restructuring, you know, and are, are there any advisory services out there that can support SMEs in this area? I think the most important thing is this. Uh, you see, all you guys are all small, medium, uh, very small and micro SMEs. Talk to the bank, please. I think the bank more than... You see, to the banks, they've never wanted MPLs. And I don't think uh, they... The banks also have got the, the those people who are doing recovery works. They do also have a KPI to reduce their MPLs. From where I came from, because my previous life also I've been doing recovery work before. So none, the, so none of the banks will actually welcome MPLs lah. So please talk to the bankers. Don't talk to I. I don't think you need to talk to consultants. Please talk to the banks because they manage your loan. Work out, uh, work out a program with them. But you must be sincere also, lah, in some of your your communication with them. I find that sometimes the SMEs also hide some of the things and don't share with the banks, uh, in totality. If you if you don't share, the banks are not able to also understand where you're coming from and how they can actually help you out, lah. That's my but, advice. Lah. Okay. Yeah. But maybe, Daniel, I, I think I'll take a little bit on that and I have to take a slightly uh, divergent mm. view from Leong here. Uh, that's mm. fine if you can repay the loan over a period of time. But the reality is, in some cases, the balance sheet is so badly hit. Uh, mm. And we're not talking maybe micro and then micro, you probably want to just liquidate and wind up. But in some cases, the, the balance sheet is severely hit. And this is actually one of the major policy issues uh, being discussed by the government at the moment. How do we solve that? And there's no particularly good answer at the moment, but I think that's the one that's being actually the policymakers are starting to look at and seeing. Because one of the things we know is that one is with the moratoriums, the debt is increasing. But when the debt is increasing, but the problem is uh, revenue side is contracting. Uh, we might have some some pickup in the short period of time, but if you look even, even in the last, every time we open up, but if you look over a 12 month period or next 24 month period, uh, companies will be down on their on their revenue side. So I think this one, unfortunately, there's no easy answer. So that's uh, we'll have to wait and see what what comes out from the policymaker side. Yeah, on on that one. I think I think one of the key things is also to the SMEs is that we also need to know how to pivot and uh, mm. become relevant. I think digitalizing is one of them. So really, it's very important uh, to understand that. Uh, we need to remain to remain relevant. We need to know what's the latest trend. How do we digitalize, or how do we find new markets and all that? So, uh, the government is here to help is one thing, but we also ourselves also must learn how to divert, You know how to remain uh, proactive. Relevant. You know, find uh, relevant, find find new ways to do business and all that lah. So that's I think is also very key lah. You know. So those who uh, I've seen some those who have started early to pivot and always know how to change. I think change is always constant, like what we always talk about. So we always must learn how to change uh, and find ways. Uh, I I also see that during this time there are some businesses which even made more money uh, 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 than before. You know. And and because they know how to transform their businesses all that, and some of them like food business, uh, they did even better because 
to them, they, they can go even further. People, the, the business is in Puchong, but now everywhere can buy their business because of Grab and Food Panda and all that. So really, I think it's also, as the SMEs have, themselves have to be very proactive. You know? yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Innovation. Yes, innovate. Yeah, we need to innovate. Yeah. 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 So I really want to thank uh, Mr. Jong for all your insights and also Ravi you know, for sure. all the sharing as well. And I think um, you know, for all those who want to learn more you know, and to really just continue to grow all the SMEs out there, uh, don't forget to check out um, the Nicole.app or Nicole.tech and you can actually gain a lot of learning in there, self-learning, and you can actually subscribe to that. And um, we, I think we learned a lot. I personally learned a lot and got a lot of insights from you, Leong. Uh, and I, next time I know, you know how <laughs> sure, well, different platforms we can go to or the different advice that we can actually get even from CPC itself. Ravi, yep. I'm not just, uh, maybe you want to close up for us as well? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, Ms. Leong and CGC, please keep up that excellent work you guys are doing. I mean, that that's sure. an eye-opener one. You've got that advisory function. You've got that, um, you've got, um, you know, uh, yeah. you've got a... You got the advisory function. You got set it. You got. I mean, even if it was me. That's, you know, to me, I yeah. I know banking and and I know that. Well, startups you can't get a bank loan. You just uh, <laughs> educated me a little bit down there as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. In terms of you know uh, what you do, guys are doing. I mean, generally CGC perhaps I would be more familiar with. Uh, in yeah. terms of the seventy percent full recourse. But the thing about what the new stuff that you're going to do, I really hope yeah. that you know. I mean, through programs like this, uh, somehow yeah. that message gets out a lot yeah. more in terms yeah. of what more can be, you know, people become aware of it. Sure. That's that's really what sure. I'm trying to say is that it's wonderful what you're doing. And at number 85 billion over what, I mean, it's a, it's a period of time. But, you know, yeah. again, you know, that, 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 that simple thing that the bank can only lend $3, uh, $1, yeah. but with no yeah. guarantee can lend $3. Again, yeah. all that is just yeah. helping and this one. And of course, the counter cyclical portion. I know yep. a lot of people say not enough uh, people are struggling out there, but just imagine if it wasn't there, it'd be even worse, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So true. Agree, yeah. Agree, yeah. Yeah. So, so everybody you, stay safe. Go check, out, go check out, stay safe, check out the IMSME <laughs> to see yeah. what options and what benefits you can get correct, from there as well. Correct, correct, correct. And do approach uh, our branches. We have got branches everywhere. So if you are an SME, if you are anywhere, if you need any assistance or that, please go to our branches, contact us. We have got many ways you can contact us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we'll contact you virtually for now until physical comes yep. back again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. And, you know, tune in to the next week as well. We'll be here every Friday, and, same time, same And just, uh, just to let everybody know, uh, SME Corp celebrates 50 years next year. Yeah. yeah. Wow. No, CGC. CGC, sorry. Oh, CGC. CGC. Sorry, sorry, CGC. My, You'll be celebrating I lost 50 my years. Sorry. 50 yeah. years. CGC. Yeah, CGC. Yes. 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 Sorry, that's the guest here. Yep. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. worries. We will no look, forward look forward to that. Yes. We look forward Looking to that. We look forward to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so right. Much, Cheers. Bye. 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 Okay, look at this, you can see it. It's a lot of articles, podcasts, and courses. I told you, you can see it. You can see it. You can see it. You can see it. Yes, so you can see it. 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 一日一日，看好了嘛，就就来就搞。有啦，搞到讲了嘛，都卖听，农村都特别去看，特别看个了。啊，看个了，你讲的真搞啊！我见好好好，我先好好来。